weavers have any type of a solid border around the uh, the weaving design when they complete the rug they leave a small opening which is called the uh, weaver's path <laughs> One of the uh, things that ne the Ne are known for, or the Navajo people, is actually the arts and craft. And the weaving of the Navajo rug has been regarded as a, an art. And it is something that our people have done for many generations. The uh, story about the way that the, the Ne women begin to weave is told about the uh, spider woman. Spider woman was uh, an actual person and I think a lot of times when the uh, the net talk about spider woman you picture a, a spider body and a woman head but that's not really the way that the um, actual story of the spider woman is. She is of a clan that was uh, of weavers and the only clan that is known today as the Weaver clan is Hatsohni or something into that, uh, okay. And those types of uh, clans that refer to something to do with uh, the weaving clans. And so it is that the um, way that the tradition of the weaving was uh, passed on was from the, uh, first it came from the spider woman and the uh, women were taught how to weave, and it's a, an actual skill that, that was developed by the original weaver, a spider woman, and she taught the women how to weave. There are some stories in that that our people, the Dene, learned to weave from the um, Pueblo people, but that is not true at all. The uh, weaving that the uh, Pueblo people do is completely different. The way that the Neh women weave is unique and it is something that actually takes a lot of training to be able to do. And uh, it was that my mother and all of her sisters and all of her cousins and all of her aunts and all of her female relatives were weavers. And my mother, my late mother, was a very accomplished weaver. She could uh, weave just about anything, double face rugs and uh, intricate designs and also the designs from all of the different regions of the Navajo Nation. And uh, she was featured in many uh, publications and that as an accomplished weaver. And I remember that she at some times during her career that she would have as many as three or four looms set up and she would be weaving and she could weave and reproduce uh, rugs that somebody might have given her a picture of and so she was a very accomplished weaver and she began weaving when she was very young and she would tell me that uh, her mother would uh, allow her to do the carding and the spinning and uh, all of the preparations to from setting up a loom and to uh, begin the early stages of learning how to weave but even before then it was her grandmother that went out and collected some uh, early morning uh, spider web from uh, some vegetation somewhere when it had still had dew drops on it and she collected that and brought it to my uh, my mother and this was from my grandmother and she took the little granddaughter's hands and she had them hold out uh, had her hold out her hands and then she applied the spider web do and that to her hands and gave her the special blessing and that that women give to each other when they are being taught to weave and it is, it is to encourage them to uh, continue the interest in learning how to to weave and make clothing, not only rugs. But it was that uh, she began weaving at a very early age. And uh, I think she mentioned that she was probably 11 or 12 years old when she began to weave. And she wove uh, very small rugs. And 
she became uh, known for her weaving skills and she was able to sell many rugs uh, all over the, uh, the various parts of the Southwest. And it is that uh, her name was Winona, which is unusual. Winona is the oldest child and among the Lakota people, Winona would be first and oldest girl child. And uh, that was her first name. And uh, she was a, a Yazi before she became uh, brown after marrying with my father. But it was that uh, she did weave many different rugs. But I don't have a sample of some of her rugs, but I do have a sample of the uh, the uh, type of weave that's called the chief blanket. This is just a very small one. The uh, original size of a chief blanket would be something that would be the size of maybe a, a Pendleton blanket. But this is a very small uh, sample of the type of uh, blanket that would be. And this one has the the white and the black and what they call the Ganado Red. And uh, this was some of the early types of weaving that was very popular uh, to own. And uh, down through the years, they've uh, developed different types of weaving, different reg regions of the Navajo Nation. The women weave various uh, types of rugs. This one here is uh, Two Gray Hills. And what I wanted to uh, point out here as well is when weavers have any type of a solid border around the, uh, the weaving design, when they complete the rug, they leave a small opening, which is called the uh, weaver's path. And uh, in Navajo, or in the language of our people, the ne, they call it hansake, which is to say that they don't want to lock up their mine inside of the uh, the rug by enclosing it with a solid border around the, the, the rug. Now here's uh, a more modern type of weave and this is the one that is uh, called the uh, pictorial. This is very uh, more recent. In this one you have a corn and a corn stalk, a corn tassel at the top and uh, down at the bottom is a basket and on the uh, corn plant, there are birds of different colors and that sometimes they uh, weave rugs that might be depicting a yebiche, a uh, bunch of dancers and that, that are depicted in the uh, rug. But uh, weaving is a skill that takes an entire lifetime to, uh, to develop. And I have several tools in that here. The uh, one that most people are familiar with in the uh, preparation of the wool is the carding. And uh, these are carding tools and that. And these were given to my wife. My wife also weaves. And so it is that uh, these are carding uh, when you're preparing the wool. After you shear it from the sheep, you have to wash it. And after it is washed, then you uh, have to spin it. And after it is spun, then it has to be colored or dyed. And then you roll it into small balls and that, so that uh, you can sit at the loom and uh, there are single strand. And sometimes all the different weavers always have a certain number of spins that they put on for a certain length. And the uh, weaving and the weaver, they know how to spin the wool. And so it is that they, uh, have to instruct their family members as to how to, to uh, spin the wool. So it is that they ha have the right can pull on it. So when, it, when they're weaving it, sometimes they might spin it not very tight and be able to make a saddle blanket. And sometimes they might spin it really fine or really tight and to use it to make clothing. And so there was an, a number of different things in that. This here is a batten. This here is the, an actual slab of wood, very smooth, and it's usually made out of a very hard wood. And this is the one that separates the warp when you're uh, weaving so that you can uh, uh, put the uh, wool strands through the warp as you create the pattern. And 
This here is the uh, batten. This here in Navajo, maybe I better mention, is big uh, English, is what they call it, big English. And this one here is uh, the beater, and it's called Beetzoi. And so there are all types of tools in that to, to be used when uh, weaving a rug. And so there are many things that the, the weaver has to be familiar with and be able to uh, develop their skill. My late mother was always weaving in that, and uh, she wove several uh, rugs in that when she was losing her eyesight. And she wanted to uh, weave all of her grandchildren one rug. And so she did. And uh, because she was losing her eyesight, she says, I can only make one design. She says, so this is going to be the design that I'm going to put on every one of my grandchildren's rug. And so everybody got a rug that she wove. But this is a real fine weave, very tight. And it is that uh, this is the, the last bunch of weaving she did before she completely lost her sight and being able to uh, weave the rugs that she had uh, done so throughout her life. And... Um, I have uh, a lot of good memories of my mother. She had very strong hands, and, but she had also very soft hands because as she worked with the wool, the lanolin, lanolin from the wool would get on her hands and her hands were so very soft, but she had a real tight grip. If she ever got a hold of you, you, know, she, you knew that she had very strong hands. And so those are the things that I re remember about my mother and my grandmothers and all the Navajo women in my family that have been weavers. And so it is that those things are the things that we are told. Yeah, that's how